Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dalex and we have another 6 out of 10 adventure. Now this is the Gila we've been using, as I've said before it's a standard passive tank Gila as you can pretty much see. About 350 million ISKs worth and it has been performing its duty as one of a pair of kind of escort Gila's for Yepfar's Tengu doing these 6 out of 10s and as you saw in the last couple of videos we've made about 3 billion running them this way the one odd module in there is this one the uh, Heaver Saitsu never quite sure how to say that ballistic control unit you could swap that for a regular ballistic control or another drone damage amplifier depending on what's best for you today we're going to do something a little bit different I talked in the last video about pushing your luck when doing these sites in low sec and what to kind of try to avoid i.e. the busy systems, the gateway systems etc etc so we have now got another 6 out of 10 in a low sec gateway system and quite a busy one and it's a Friday evening and just to add to the mix we are going to give the Gila temporarily to Miss Velazy there who is going to give it back to Fintrash the Alpha who's going to try flying the same fit in the same role and just see how we get along so we'll just do the trade and we'll be right back see what we get so here we are with Finn Trash chilling in his cormorant switch him over to the Gila let's just see what effect that has on the stats don't worry look we didn't um, note the stats when Anthrax had it I shall use the power of technology to sort that out in a minute when we've got the pit screen open very nice skin indeed but that unfortunately isn't much help we've got some warning tabs on the fit screen already we can't use tech 2 medium drones so we'll just take those straight out the cargo hold the Kaldari navy vespers will be fine i'm sure right let's have a look at what we've got so i'm going to pop up there you go the stats from and praxis fit we've no longer cap stable we've dropped a good 120 dps we've lost 20 kilometers off of our drone control range and we've lost about 5000 ehp the capacitor not being stable is nine and a half minutes, which is quite good and normally wouldn't be an issue. But these rooms take about, well, these sites take about 45 minutes to run. There's cap pressure on there because of the new towers. So that's not really going to hang. So now I've switched over to Stackmon because the shopping is quite good here. So we're going to try and have a little look at fixing this fit. So first thing we're going to fix because it's quite easy is a drone link augmenter up there in that spare high slot. That's put our drone control range up to 60 kilometers, but we're over on CPU. I'm going to take the easy solution. I'm going to switch off one of the missile launchers. They're quite secondary on this fit, so we'll just run the free. Let's see how we get on. I'm obviously simulating the fit. Let's have a little look. We're still low on CPU, so we're going to have to get rid of these multi-spectrum Tech 2 hardeners, I think, and look at some compact ones. They're going to be a little bit easier to fit, and we're going to go for the damage-specific hardeners. But to be honest, the biggest problem we have capacitor-wise is this here. An Alpha cannot train fuel conservation. Now that is a 10% reduction in capacitor use on afterburners, so we can't do that, and that afterburner is what is killing the capacitor we need the afterburner and it is already the enduring afterburner so we're going to take off those two tech 2 multi-spectrum shield hardeners and we're going to look at the damage specific ones obviously in this case we're just going to go thermal and kinetic that's what the serpentis want to do to us let's look at the info screens because that's where you'll see why these are always quite a good option and not just when you're stuck we're stuck for CPU and we need more capacitor. Now, as you can see here, the compact multi-spectrum hardener actually takes less CPU than the kinetic one. But here's the real kicker. The multi-spectrum compact hardener uses twice as much capacitor when it cycles. Now, the enduring hardener is an option if only capacitor is the issue. That only uses 16 capacitor a cycle compared to 20 for the compact and 40 for the multi-spectrum however it still has the maximum i think as high as a tech 2 multi-spectrum 40 cpu requirement so that's not really an option here so we've built the fit in the fitting screen now we're going to just finish it all up then we'll have a look at the numbers we've got and we'll compare Anne's numbers to fin trash's numbers on the fit he was given and then the fit as he's had to modify it to make it much more practical on the site 
So what we have here, we've got Anne's fit, we've got the fit given straight to Finn Trash, and then we've got the modified fit. So you can see the numbers there for yourselves, pause the screen. Basically overall, we've lost 161 DPS. We've lost 10 kilometers missile range. We've got an extra five kilometers drone range. Drone damage is reduced by 135 DPS. EHP is reduced by a whopping 17.3 thousand, but technically a lot of that is resistances we don't need, i.e. EM and explosive. Not to deal with the Serpentis anyway. However, we may not just get shot at by the Serpentis, hey. And we've lost about 40 meters per second top speed with the afterburner running. So there you go. And I think because I gave the ship back that way, it really hit me, that drop in performance. And you know I love my alphas and nobody can knock a Gila. And for an alpha, a Gila is a very powerful ship. But I thought that was a good illustrative experience of just what you are lacking by not being an Amiga, even if you're in the exact same ship. Let's see now how it actually performs on the site because that's really the important bit. It's not about the numbers on the fit screen really, is it? So as we get into the first room, it's just business as usual really. The Gila's are gonna prioritize the frigates because they can scram and web. I don't think we get any nuke towers in this room so they're not a priority target since they're not there. And then we just switch to Rage Ammo if we can. Although the Alpha drops down to like 22 kilometers range with Rage Ammo. So there aren't really many opportunities to use it. You don't really want to be getting in that close too much. But in terms of general performance, everything is pretty good. We're certainly playing our part and pulling our weight. So have Alpha tag along is not really that much of a handicap. Now that big drop in EHP between the fits, a lot of that, as I said, was resistances we don't need to fight the Serpentis. But they do leave quite big holes compared to the other fit in our explosive and EM damage. So that is something to be mindful of. In terms of just lurking around low sec in this fit, we're not as robust as we were before. So this is a much more site specific fit than the general purpose passive fit. I'm kind of working on a video in my head at least of top five reasons to turn from Alpha to Amiga and I think just this kind of illustrates one of them right there that you're never quite getting what an Amiga is getting out of the same ship. There's a lot of secondary skills that you can't train up to level five or you can't train up at all and those percentages do stack up. We are keeping an eye on local, we are keeping an eye on D-Scan and we're pretty sure we're starting to attract a little bit of attention in here now. So we've nearly cleared the first room. And there you go, there's the sisters combat scanner probes up on the D-Scan, so someone's having a look around. At the moment, Yetfar's got his D-Scan set to much closer range and they're not close to us. So we're gonna stick around and just clear what we think is the last way for this room and then go and dock up and probably do our little log out trick just to flummox them. So let's get that guy dead. We'll get the drones pulled. Apparently the combat probes are pretty much on top of us now. So it's very likely that they know where we are. Now the probes have been pulled. That's the most dangerous part. It usually means that they know where you are and they're coming to get you or they're going to reship. So we're going to go dock up. We have a nice long break. The perfect opportunity, I should think, to look at this beautiful Tempest skin again. There are the five winners from the last giveaway. To have a chance to win one of these skins, we need a comment down below, please. We'd like you to subscribe if you're not already. And we'd like you to leave your in-game name in that comment so we know how to get a prize to you should you win one. Comments this week. Again, I'd like to hear your low sex stories, but also your thoughts on the best reasons to turn from Alpha to Amiga and start paying that sub. Apart from just the getting better ship performance, I've just touched on that one. Let me know your ideas down below and who knows, we might even incorporate your comment into that video when I make it, which will be quite soon anyway. Let's get back to business. So we had a meeting, we decided to come back up to the site even though we know we're pretty sure something's going to happen up here. We've crossed the first room to get to this gate. I've lagged behind slightly because I'm a little bit slower and I'm frantically trying to get through this gate because our plan is to go through the gate even though all the rats are in there. It might put the guy off following us in, who knows, it's just more for them to worry about. But as I hit my warp, the ship needs to turn around fully and that is enough time for that Lachesis to get a tackle on me from over 40 kilometers away. So I'm here. We are in it. All I can do now is put up as good a fight as I can. I have told Yetfar just to leave me to it. 
This is what the Gila's were here for, remember. If you haven't seen the previous videos, the pair of Gila's are worth half as much as that Tengu. So if anyone was going to get caught, it was going to be the Gila. It was the Alpha Gila waggling along at the back. You'll see that the Lachesis is applying no damage. I'm getting through his shields reasonably well. My drones are giving him a pounding. But uh, he's yet to start rep. So let's see what actually happens here. Sweet Lane has got me in his grasp. I'm assuming he's holding me here for some deeps to get up here. I'm overheating the afterburner to try to pull range. And just for a moment, he drops his tackle and I could have got out. But I can't hit that button quick enough to get out. I think that was an error. I know I'm well within his tackle range and he's now starting to rep up. I got him into half armor. Oh no, no, look at this. We are now joined on grid by a golem. Here's the deeps. <laughs> so I'm kind of dead here, I'm guessing. I'm amazed at his tank. I'm very impressed. The golem is now, I guess, going to plod over my way and then give me a good battering. I've stopped overheating, there's not much point. Let's just keep going, see if I can manage to get out of his tackle. I think he's faster than me, but you never know. The golem's now locking me up, but he doesn't start applying any damage yet. So I'm wondering if they're waiting for even more people to get up here on grid and get on the kill mail. And they, of course, have no idea how much my fit is worth. They've just seen a Tengu and two Gila's. Any of the Gila's could be as expensive as a Tengu. You do see those fits out there, don't you? But we've got our cunning plan. I'm expendable number two and I am being expended quite soon, I am sure. Come on, this is the painful bit when you have to just sit and wait and sit and wait. I'm trying to see what I can do. I'm now getting red boxed by that golem. Let's see what happens now, my friends. I'm now webbed, scrammed and disrupted. The golem's getting incredibly close onto me. Maybe he's just trying to make sure I feel this for as long as possible. I'm still not sure who else is going to turn up on grid. Yet Farah has been told just to leave me to it, but out of blind loyalty. He's come back up, so he's over by the gate that we came in from. He could split them. It could cause confusion. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't expect him to do that. He wasn't supposed to do that. He certainly wasn't supposed to bring the Tengu, but let's see how this goes. I'm now getting walloped. Absolutely walloped, my friends, here. We expected it to happen and I'm gone and I, that's a Gila down. We got a Gila down. I'm just going to get my pod off grid ASAP. It's not a very blingy pod at all. In fact, it's pretty much empty. But I'm going to get out of here. Now, we haven't got the footage, but unfortunately the other Gila was lost too. So we have lost 700 mils worth of Gila's right there. The Tengu got out. But I'm quite happy with everything that has transpired here because it's fun. And we're well in profit isk wise, aren't we? And you need to pay your dues to the blood god, even if it's in your blood now and again. Anyway, we need to get to local. We need to drop that GF. This is an absolutely salt free experience as far as we're concerned. And <laughs> we know exactly what we were letting ourselves in for. They've done well to catch us. That Lachesis was indeed impressive. We're actually going to carry on chatting. Off camera, we exchanged fits, the Lachesis for the Tengu. They gutted to see that it wasn't the Tengu they prioritized. So the plan absolutely worked. Now, we've lost 700 millions worth of Gila's, but those guys also sold us. They finished the site. They sold us the escalation to the second site where the loot is for 50 million isk. We did go and clear that site and that got 450 million isk back. So that paid for one of the Gila's and what we paid them for the bookmark right there so we're actually you know the swings and roundabouts are in full effect here we've had a great laugh we've made a load of isk we've met some new people who turned out to be nice guys and we've you know had a chat had some fits we'll have some fun fights for them i'm sure in the future sweet lane in the lachesis and john Tichi in the golem you played it well guys and we've had a chat they're perfectly good low sec people a pleasure to be murdered by so well played you guys and a lot more hunts go wrong than go right for even the best hunters because people can just leave or whatever we could have just not come back they could have wasted a lot of time waiting around for us but the patience paid off for them that time so we're happy they're happy the ship builders guild of new eden is happy because they get to sell us two new gilas you know what goes around and all that the market needs our destruction 
and it's all good as far as we're concerned this is our low sec life and we like it anyway guys we're going to leave it there for now i'll be back very soon i had a bit of an operation on my jaw a couple of weeks ago so i've been a little bit lacking in output but i'm all good now don't you worry about that leave those comments down below with your in-game name to join in with the giveaway leave us a like if you'd enjoyed it and found this entertaining and useful Subscribe if you haven't already, please. Let your mates know about our videos if you think they'll enjoy them or be useful. But for now, take care of yourselves and each other. Remember, even is believing. Fly brave and goodbye.